Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite time of the week. That's right. It is time for DBR on CBR. It is Dragon Ball Rewatch, and we hope you are watching along with us on Hulu and Crunchyroll. And if you are reading along with us, well, not for these last couple episodes, but if you're reading along with us, we hope you are reading in the Viz Media translation of the manga. Once again, we are your hosts. My name is Alex. I'm Sam. And I'm John. Welcome to episode 31, Wedding Plans. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Japan got this September 24th, 1986. Americans, February 13th, 2002. And once again, we are adapting no chapters at all. If you're reading the manga, you're going to be very confused because this is all anime filler. Continuing sort of our Red Ribbon Army prelude, effectively. Sort of, kind of, ish. I mean, look, I like it because not only do we get Emperor Pilaf, Shu, and Mai, who aren't, again, in this point in the manga, but... It's the last time we check in on Chi Chi and the Ox King, basically before the end of the series. <laughs> it is amazing that Chi Chi is introduced like as such this big thing in the episode, and then yeah, you so rarely see her. She just kind of goes. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to bring something up. Can we bring up the fact that Commander Red's voice has changed in this episode? He's become Shrek. Yes. Uh, at the start, like yeah, this weird speech. He's, he's now really Scottish in that not like Scottish in the not being voiced by someone from Scotland way. <laughs> that Michael Myers kind of way. <laughs> yeah, it's very odd. It just he wasn't he wasn't Scottish last episode. I don't think he's Scottish next episode. He's just briefly Scottish. Did, I... did he get a different voice actor for like? Did they have to do like a transition voice actor for this episode, or is it just the same guy trying something new? <laughs> I could. It's Red, yeah. Red Ribbon Army talked like a Scotsman day didn't go down well. Very special day at the Funimation office. You know, everybody has to talk like a Scotsman that day. I, I mean, to, it, to, early two thousands, Shrek had just come out. Maybe that was it. Everyone's like, that the kids like the Shrek. Let's make everyone sound like Shrek. And then they never stopped liking the Shrek. I don't know Shrek three. <laughs> this is also, also uh, not voiced by Chris Sabat. It's uh, it's jo Josh Josh Martin's got the Commander Red just for the ah. yeah no Sabat this time no, at least at least until we get into the plane and Sabat is talking to himself very obviously <laughs> oh the old Chris Sabat uh but, yeah Ooh, go ahead but we did learn the exact speed of a laden seagull in this episode which was fifty miles an hour <laughs> that's a fast seagull by the way that's a fast seagull. This is a fast seagull that can avoid a jet, but then again, this is the same jet that can apparently be snuck up on by the flying technodrome. <laughs> they need to fix their radar system. <laughs> they really do. It seems like that's the shortcoming of the Red Ribbon Army. Like they have really bad radar technology. I will say this is a great episode if you're a fan of 80s computer noises, because there are a lot of them. Yeah, just Pull out your Commodore 64 and load up a tape, because that's what we're doing. I was mentioning this last week. The Red Ribbon Army, after a terrifying or formidable introduction, are maybe not as terrifying in this episode. Even even launching a surprise attack on a village, getting ready to throw a wedding. Um, very, very tombstone. Um, yeah, it's uh yeah, they 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 get nerfed pretty fast. <laughs> also, how dopey is the Ox King that he doesn't recognize? Um, not Goku, Foku. Foku. Oh, I need a figure of a shoe Goku, like, immediately. The, the second I finished this episode, I was straight on eBay. Like, they must have made a figure of this, because they've made a figure I... of anything else. Nope. I actually have a question regarding Foku. Uh, the mask that they put on him has that, like, that beady eye flat mouth thing going on. And they yeah. also do that in Pokemon with Ditto. So, is this, like... Vision, like maybe you guys know this more than I do. Is this like a consistent visual thing with doppelgangers in like Japanese anime, or is this just like a just a a, a thing of the time period? I'm I'm genuinely curious because it seems to pop up in more places than just here. I've always presumed it was just a reference to theater masks, which do have. Let's see, or I was it's either that, or it might just be like how whenever you see TV in universe, it, it's always made to look intentionally awful just to make it really clear to the audience that this is a fake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Poir kind of has the same thing whenever Poir takes, just in general, with the beady eyes. So I assume there's that kind of signifies a level of artificiality, I suppose. It's also just really funny. 
It is also just very <laughs> Oh, one of my sad thing. We actually do lose a really good joke in the dub was when um, Shu has the mask on. She was like, I'm not a very good Goku. And Hua starts screaming at him because mm-hmm. you uh, can't say I when playing as Goku because Goku doesn't use Watashi. Goku uses Aura. Aura. Yes, rather than I because obviously Goku has a hit, uh, it's Kanzi accent, which is effectively Midwestern, I think, culturally. Yeah. But yeah, uh, P. Laugh keeps getting on him for accidentally saying Watashi I rather than Aura I. See, I love that when you say, okay, this is just how I know you're not from America, dude. Like, when you said hick accent and then you went Midwest. <laughs> no, no, your states. I know there's because... New York, California, then stuff. Then stuff. Like, but yeah, no, it is that like very like kind of banjo-y accent, I think. It would be more for the Americans out there. Well, it's kind of like the way they they subtitle Goku sometimes. They definitely ain't. make him, yeah, ain't or country boy. Boy, you know, like he's kind of got that country accent. He's very Tom. He's a Tom Sawyer archetype in a lot of ways, if you look and, at. It. And Shemmel, like later, like later on, way down the line, like Shemmel started picking up more on that later because at first there wasn't a lot of that in the English dub, and then all of a sudden you had Shemmel being like ain't or you're saying things like that, just kind of throwing it in without giving him the like full on hi there everybody kind of accent. Yeah, I, I think that comes more from the script writing as Funimation kind of, um really started paying attention starting with like kai on they were like oh yeah we should probably add a little more of that personality in there rather than just trying to get the lip flaps to move match (laughs) that is a a really quick sidebar that was always like a thing with how justin cook did voice acting like in everything he was really big on matching those those flaps and also matching the intonation of the japanese voice actors like anytime you hear cook you, he's always trying to hit that tone, which is why sometimes when he's Raditz specifically, it sounds really weird to the English ear. Like h- h- the way he says it is very weird. But, you know, going back to the actual episode we're talking about, instead of talking about Justin Cook. One of my favorite, like one of the funniest just still images from this episode for me for all of Dragon Ball is um, when Ox King, like, you know, uh, Chu and Pilaf are like conspiring off and they're like whispering to themselves. And all of a sudden, Ox King's humongo face comes in the frame, like, hey, what are you guys talking about? And they're like, they're looking shocked. Oh. Like, I just, for me, that's one of the funniest single like frame images from, from Dragon Ball. It is so good. Oh. Like, how they have the Ox King move in this. <laughs> Like how he kind of like he moves like a Doctor Slump character again because he kind of flaps a little bit when he runs, but he has the really short steps like Ariel does. It's such a good look, and it's it gives him so much character. I love Ox King in this episode. I think Ox King is so funny, and I love him with the villagers and like establishing all of that. And I also we do have to we do have to talk about Ox King. Just absolutely Ox King versus technology. Do big dude with axe or actual military tanks? Who wins that fight? I mean, we've established, and everyone's kind of like scared of Ox. Like Ox King is known, right? Like Pilaf's like, yo, we gotta mess with the Ox King, and like Colonel Silver's like, God, we gotta mess with the Ox King. <laughs> like, I, I, he's. Okay. Yeah. Even the narrator brings it up that he's given up his evil ways. Like they make a big deal of like, yeah, this is a new thing, guys. Uh, he didn't used to be this happy family man. They really do push the Ox King used to be a scary dude. Yeah, yeah. Which makes it so I, weird how well adjusted Chi Chi is. I well, would debate well adjusted well. <laughs> for the Dragon Ball universe. I mean, well-adjusted. okay, yeah. Hurst looking out the window saying, "I will die if I don't meet Goku again." A boy she met for probably an hour and a half. I would say <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I, I guess you could officially confirm this is a Romeo and Juliet relationship. They knew each other for about four hours, and then, thanks to Ox King, killed five people because those people were in those tanks. They weren't. They weren't drones. <laughs> body count's going up now, guys. Keep an eye on that. This is the high body count part of the show. I will I will say, you're talking about the, the nerf of the Red Ribbon Army. Them invading that village is, I think, the best symbol of it. Because so you went from that last episode where it was like a very small group breaking into that family's house or breaking into the shop to we're going to roll up on a town and just start shelling it. 
with 105 by giving them so many guys you've made them comical again because oh what's gonna rob start firing shells uh, and then yeah what takes ox king down merry-go-round gum and a net you are now the comedic force <laughs> when when the red ribbon army is introduced very soon in the manga goku makes short work of them immediately it's more the it's always been more the officers that you have to look out for. Like Colonel Silver is presented as like, oh, watch out, this guy isn't like anybody else. And then he also, you know, doesn't last that long. <laughs> but but uh but yeah, we're cannon fodder. There we we've got our cannon fodder again. We're 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 set, guys. I, I do have to ask one thing about I, I love Colonel Silver's design. Do not get me wrong when I say this. Why? Do we think it's acceptable in a military unit to not wear a shirt? Like, all the time. Like, constantly no shirt. It's so your masculinity can deter the enemy. <laughs> Show off, just showing it off. It's very, it's very, that uh, the, uh, very huge. That or the Red Ribbon Army accidentally picked up the Tom of Finland book rather than the military uniforms book. <laughs> it's, very, it's very vogue. It's yeah. like, I just... It was something I particularly noticed in this episode, probably because like we just get so many more shots of him not in shadow, where I'm just like, oh, this seems wildly impractical. He is. <laughs> Some of the shots you get of him do sort of give the impression of like the animators are like, and just something for the moms. <laughs> a little bit of fan service. Like, we, it, we've had a lot of girl fan service. Now let's do... Yeah, it always reminds me of like um, when they did Comrade Cougar and there was like a whole thing of like, we must have, because uh, the a guy playing Cougar was very young and very attractive. And they said, we're going to have him have his shirt off as many times as we can and show him lying in bed as many times as we can so the parents will keep watching. And I got that a lot with him. It was like, he's always going to be posing like triumphantly like a fantasy painting on his Jeep and all this. Yeah, it definitely felt like here's a bit for the parents. <laughs> <laughs> And for the dads, okay. here's the Ox King. Yeah, you could argue there's two male gazy characters within the Red Ribbon Army, and this is the first and arguably more effective one. Certainly the less offensive one. <laughs> I was about to bring... <laughs> oh, when we get to that, when we get that episode, it's, you're just going to have me bleep for half of it because I will be swearing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hate that. Magical. Burning passion. <sighs> Talking of uh, voices, <laughs> Chi-Chi's voice in this is um, a little high. I'll die if I never see him again. It's like olive oil on helium. Yeah, it is very olive oil esque. I, I will admit, like, Chi Chi gets such a bad rap once Dragon Ball Z hits. I genuinely do love Baby Chi Chi. The the few times that we get her, I think that she's very fun. I think it's very very cute. I love how quickly Ox King is like aren't you really young to get married? And she's like, when you know, you know. And he's like, all right, bet. Let's make this wedding happen. Like, yeah. Entire village. So <laughs> yeah. I, it's even funny in Japan because that whole, they keep that thing in. Like, aren't you a little too young to be dating? She's like, oh, when it's true love, you'll know. And he's like, well, fine. We'll start the nuptials. And then she goes, what's a nuptials? A <laughs> wedding. Uh, so they have this great, like, almost Abbott and Costello of them talking past each other that totally proves the point the Ox King was making. She is clearly too young for this, but he's down for it. I love the later bit as well when he's like, picking flowers? Oh, children grow up so fast. <laughs> oh. I, 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 it's, it, it's really, I really do love, I do love the Goku and Chi-Chi stuff, like especially when they meet up in that little flower field. I love how Chi-Chi is like so romantic about it. And then you have Goku who's just like, a sweet little boy who is just who's more interested in like I don't know eating dirt and punching stuff than girls, and that is a thing that never stops with Goku. He just kind of falls into getting married, which I enjoy about him. But I I think it's very sweet. I re I think I've mentioned this before. I love little kid romances in anime. I think they are so cute, and there's always done in such like a really wholesome, beautiful little way. And Goku and Chi Chi just have. They give me such warm, good energy vibes, especially here. So, like, th that made me genuinely happy. It worked really well here because they had... Goku was portrayed as a kid very well. They have sort of nailed Goku as a child, which I like. He mm -hmm. acts... The thing you see with, like, anime children is they act like they're 57. Like, like... Uh, <laughs> a lot of magic girl shows have that. Oh, I'm, I'm in elementary school, but I own seven cars. Like, well... I have a mortgage payment I yeah. gotta get back on. So we gotta Go deal with this monster. 
Goku has the hyperactivity and sort of lack of focus and sort of inability to in sort of wider consequence that yeah, he feels like an actual child. Yeah, like yeah. Chi Chi being like, I I want a big family. What do you think of that, Goku? And Goku just being like, I, I just I fell asleep. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then Chi Chi keeps hitting him too, <laughs> which I also think is a really good little kid like little kids with crushes like just smacking the crap out of each other because they don't know how to handle the big feelings in their tiny bodies. And I yeah. like the fact that this is a rare time where Goku gets upset by being hit as well. Like, like stop hitting me. He gets snip he gets snippy about it, which is a really nice little character detail because you know he's just come off the Jackie Chun fight where he got his ass you know he got beaten to a pulp for like 25 minutes. But like, like this four is four hours. <laughs> for us. 25 minutes but for this is he's like this is the time where he's like hey stop it yeah yeah because it's not competitive he's just this girl that he enjoys hanging out with just knocking him about you know like i say it's he's very much kind of a tom sawyer figure in this episode um you know that kind of like innocence and that idea that you know it's interesting seeing quiet episodes with goku where he's not chasing smelly thieves or fighting paramilitary groups um so you got to enjoy them while we get them oh yeah <laughs> the escalation <laughs> the escalation in goku's life i i i have a d i do have a deep love of when shonen anime gives me a little slice of life stuff i think maybe it's because i'm getting older these days maybe it's just because i need that little bit of joy in my heart but i, I do like it when shonen gives you that glimpse into these characters as people and you like and John, you're right. Like it, they they nail the little kid energy so well. Like if I I've been working in education for a long time, and I used to work with little kids, and when I saw them get crushes on each other, this is pretty much what it looked like. Yeah, no, it it works really well. I like. There's a lot of nice little detail work in this as well of how they handle the wedding setup and how you see everything sort of coming in. They put a lot more effort into this than you would think they would. Because this episode set up on paper sounds like an excuse to phone in as quickly as possible. But there's a lot of really nice little bits of animation. That mo the, all, the, all, There are a lot of really good fluid motions in this episode. I, But we got to talk more about the peel-off stuff, because the peel-off stuff is just so good. Oh, I mean, it's a great example of it, though, how Chu's body language changes entirely when he's got the Goku mask on. Like, <laughs> they never lose the fact that it's heavy, so he's always tipping slightly and always rocking slightly. It's a total thing of like, they could have just had him stick it on and then never acknowledged it again. But here it's constantly, they're playing to, he cannot see what's going on through how he moves. And it's, again, it's something they didn't have to do, but it works really well. I, it's, it's also like, you know, this is the third filler episode we're doing in a row, really. And for me, like watching them in relatively a short, you know, short amount of time over these few weeks, they do get better as they go. Like, obviously, Nam and Monster Beast is the loser of that trio. There's some good stuff in, in last week's episode, but this one is probably my my favorite of the set. Yeah, I, I can agree with yeah. that. There's a lot of nice stuff here. And it, yeah. just, it feels like we're going somewhere. Which I also, no, is just, nice. Yeah, it, it is nice. Sorry to cut you off. No, I was just fine. thinking it's also nice to get these characters, like Chi-Chi and Ox King, who... We don't get a lot of time with in Dragon Ball. Like I, I think that this is a good use of filler is spending time with characters that you don't get to see a lot in the main story. Like I, I think that when filler does stuff like this, it's actually something very fun. It's a it's a little fan servicey, but you know what? There's a reason why fan service exists, and it's just good checking in on these characters. Like it was a it was. Pleasant to see Pilaf and his crew last episode, and again this episode. And it's nice to see, like you were saying, it, we don't get a lot of Chi-Chi and Ox King for as much, as big as they are in Goku's personal life in about six years. We don't get a lot of Chi-Chi or Ox King. So that kind of check-in where it's like, hey, remember these folks that you saw in like episode like five? Cool. You're not going to see him again for a while, but these, you know, Goku remembers them. That's nice. He won't remember her the next time he sees her. <laughs> Bye! Go Goku Farms remembers. Yeah. <laughs> I think he also we have a lot more of that soft world building with this, which I quite like in that 
sort of the the Ox King's village has changed from Fire Mountain. It's become sort of this sprawling place now. You get like Pilaf knowing the Ox King, Red Ribbon knowing the Ox King, but knowing see, obviously knowing him differently. Like Red Ribbon have brought the sort of the rocket specifically for him. Pilaf is a little bit confused and they're still calling him Demon King for a little bit. It's a really nice soft bit of world building to kind of remind the audience, hey, Goku is this little island, but there is stuff going on outside. So if we go back to Bulma, don't expect her life to be the same. Thing time is progressing. It may not be it may not progress in a logical manner, but it's progressing. Yeah. Just because Goku has a slowed aging rate doesn't mean these other characters do. You know that that se second puberty for Saiyans doesn't hit until a lot later, guys. So it does. It does make me wonder, and I'm sure that Dyson Shu lists it. Like, what? How old is Ox King? <laughs> oh, I I don't have it to hand as I would check, but I think he's quite old. Yeah, he is not. I mean, he trained. I mean, like, he, tra Gohan, like he trained Grandpa with Grandpa Gohan. <laughs> yeah, and Roshi said he was young. I know Grace we went, mentioned when they were young, they trained under him. So. Dude's like middle aged at least. So at minimum. Like, I mean that that would fit what he looks like next time we see him because he definitely hits a uh, eight a dad in his sort of late seventies kind of look. Yeah, yeah, he it, definitely. Yeah. Uh, dad in his late seventies in the eighties, but when we see him later on, he just looks like a computer programmer. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes you wonder, like you know, like with Ox King being just like an an older dad, like, and we we don't. I don't think we get any canon stuff about Chi Chi's mom. Like, at least not a lot. I, I think anything we get is only in, like, side material. I don't think it's ever mentioned in the show. So Ox King is born in, um, crap. <laughs> hey, Jack, <laughs> I, I have his death Wiki, date. come on. Yeah, I have his death date. I don't want to have his, his uh, birth date in the, um... Wait, when does he? Are we talking like when he when the whole Earth explodes? Death date, or did, is it he like canonically yeah, he, dead? Yeah, no, he comes back. He comes back. He gets okay. He's dragon he gets ball. Chocolate. Yeah, he gets chocolified. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like that. That <laughs> makes more sense because I was like, did I miss something in Super? Like, oh, one of the best things you have with the guidebooks is how they define death is really interesting because for yeah. some people, chocolified is being is killed, and other people is like chocolified was like a bad weekend. It's like, yeah, they were chocolate, but it happens. Yeah. It happens. You know, every now and then you go on a bender, you end up turn getting turned into chocolate and eaten by a bubblegum monster. Yeah. Fear yeah. and loathing in booze tummy. So I'm based on what I'm seeing, they're they they never give his specific birth date or age, but he is meant to be in his sixties to early seventies at end of Z. Okay. So, so that, that makes sense. That would make up, so ten years to end of Z. Z takes place over the course of about 10 years as well. Uh, really like 12 years, um, the core of it. So that's 22 years plus six years from the end of five years between Dragon Ball Z and five years between Dragon Ball. It's 27 years. He's basically like, if he if he's like 69, nice. He's basically in his early to mid 30s here. So does that mean Grandpa Gohan was in his early he might, just, he might have just like been like a you know he might have been sparring friendly with with Roshi well into his middle age. Man, that's a yeah. I they mean... were Grandpa Gohan and Master Roshi are just historically good friends. Very good friends. <laughs> Very good friends. The archaeologists were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. Archaeologists will refer to them as brothers. Historically good friends. <laughs> That's my headcanon now. The, the the mysterious romance between Grandpa oh, Gohan and Master Roshi. Get on we're it, shipping. fanfiction Talking of um, weird, weird changes, can I point out something that really interested me watching the Japanese and the American version of this? Is yeah. the fortune teller sequence. Huh. It's played for laughs in both, but it's really interesting to see how... Because obviously in Japan, fortune telling is much more accepted. It's part of the culture. It's part of the religion. Where in America, you think fortune teller, you think scam. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's you're going to get your wallet lifted at the circus kind of deal. Uh, I really like how they sort of differentiate that because in Japan, it's like, oh, she's the village psychic. 
So we're going to go see her because she's going to be right. And that's why Oxking believes her. But in America, it's like, oh, the cleaning lady thinks she's psychic. Let's go let's go mess with her for no reason. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's just enjoy a little scrying session and like really mess with this woman's head. Yeah, I mean, keep her busy, give her something to do. I just really like, because obviously that's something where you can't do straight localization because it wouldn't make sense. So how they handled it is really interesting to me. And yeah, Japan's like, yeah, of course, of course Ox King will believe her when she sees the ant because... She's a fortune teller. Where in America, it's like, she's weird and Oxygen is an idiot. Both, th- yes. <laughs> All of these things can be simultaneously true. That's the beauty of, of the world. The That's the beauty of fortune telling. Yeah. <laughs> you could simultaneously be correct and the Oxygen. So I guess the big takeaway is Oxygen's a dope. The Red Ribbon Army have been revealed to be chumps and. Uh, this is the last we see of Chi Chi for six years. <laughs> we, we see her for at least two minutes next episode. Oh, yeah. Isn't, oh, that, right. isn't that enough? A little bit. That, sure. <laughs> that's your daily dose of Chi Chi. Yeah. Standard shonen anime love interest. We get exactly enough to know that she is girl. She is here. She loves Goku. That's really all we need. She is girl. She dresses like Ultraman. What more do you need from your love interest? Hmm. It's not it. No, hey, you know we could all be so lucky, Goku. Uh, I mean, yes, I wish my partners could pull their horn off their head and throw it in with a boomerang sound effect. But no. <laughs> uh, but hey, Pilaf got a Dragon Ball. This is gonna be like one of the. This is a rare win for the Pilaf crew. For now, which for <laughs> now, but it's also still funny that the Pilaf crew got this ball before the Red Ribbon Army did, via the medium of vaudeville. Yes. <laughs> T- turns out, if you if you want to succeed in life, ignore the military. Go straight to the theater as a double act. Considering the... where I went to undergrad, that actually <laughs> makes sense. Theater kids are just more effective. It's just well known. That's my final thought. If in doubt, resort to vaudeville. <laughs> Any yeah. other final thoughts from you guys? Looking forward to getting into the manga material. Like I say, this is the best of the filler set that we've had. But let's keep it on the track. Let's let's bring it back to Toriyama. We've got yeah, about two episodes, and I think is it or three. Well, this is also the last episode of the first DVD set. Oh, it if is. You, That's right. Buy the Funimation slash Crunchyroll DVD sets or digital seasons on like Amazon or Vudu. Um, this is the final episode in season one. Season two begins Red Ribbon in earnest. Yeah, which uh, which means. That we have come to the end of our episode as well. The end of our first season box set, you guys. Snaps for us. Yay! So, once again, this has been DBR on CBR. It has been Dragon Ball Rewatch. We love spending this time with you every week. And if you are not buying that DVD box set or Blu-ray box set, whatever it is now, uh, you can be re- you can be rewatching with us on Hulu and Crunchyroll. And you can be, well, not right now. You can be reading along with us in the Viz Media translation of the manga. We love having spent time with you once again. We are your hosts. My name is Alex. I'm Sam. And I'm John. And we'll see you next time on Dragon Ball.